All right. A lot of times, some of you guys have asked me, what about my natural testosterone levels? Is there anything I can do to elevate these, these levels naturally? And yes, there are quite a few things you can do, and we're going to begin to touch on some of these things. But right now, we're going to talk about the way that you train. The way that you train can elevate your testosterone levels, even your resting total testosterone concentration. Uh, it can also reduce your resting total cortisol concentrations, which is good. All right, so here's, here's what we got. There was a study that compared two different groups. One group focused on hypertrophy using sets with their 10 rep max, resting only 60 seconds between sets. One minute. The other group focused on strength using sets with their 5 rep max and resting 3 minutes between sets. They found the 10 rep max group had a higher increase of testosterone than the 5 rep max group. Okay, so the group that used higher reps and rested less time, much less time, had a higher uh, increase in testosterone than the group that used a five rep max, more of a strength training type oriented approach, and rested three minutes, rested longer between sets. Okay, so lighter weight, higher reps, moving quicker, more testosterone. Also notable is that while high volume does in fact increase testosterone, it's also been shown to have a quick decrease after 45 to 60 minutes of resistance training. So that means everything's quick. Get in there, get it done, get your ass out. Don't take and lollygag, you know what I mean? Shoot the shit when you're finished. Hold the next man up, but don't hold yourself up. So go in there, move quickly, lighter weight, higher reps, high volume, very little, very, very little rest between sets. Get done and get the fuck out. Okay, if you wanted, if you're trying to stimulate more testosterone production naturally through your training, that would be the way I would I would go. Uh, and one other thing, let me touch on here. Um, this study is called "Differential Effects of Strength Training Leading to Failure Versus Not to Failure on Hormonal Responses, Strength and Muscle Power Gains." And basically, this thing just is talking about. Um, Training shy to failure, like I just told you in the other video, versus training to, all the way to complete failure, or you know, technical failure, mechanical failure. Now those that trained, um, that's, that halted each set shy of failure, they experienced reduced resting cortisol concentrations and an elevation in resting serum total testosterone concentrations. Pretty good, huh? Yeah. Versus those that did train to failure, and strength training to failure resulted in strength training to failure resulted in reductions in resting concentration of IGF-1 and elevations in IGF-BP3. Not quite as impressive training that way, I guess. Anyway, not hormonally. So. That's it. Derive from that whatever you may. Uh, just putting it out there again. A lot of people like to hear about the studies. Here's a couple studies. I'll cite them at the beginning. You can uh, reference it yourself if you're interested beyond that. All right. Take care. Have an awesome day. And of course, like as always, and as I believe for, I don't even know, over a decade, maybe longer, if you're trying to get bigger, you're trying to build muscle, you want to move quickly, you want to cut your rest time down between sets, and you want to use higher, you know, higher reps, more volume. You still want to go hard, you know. I would, I would pull up just shy of failure, of mechanical failure. Just like I said in the other video, maybe draw up, you know, call your sets at like, you know, three reps out from where you're actually going to mechanically fail. And so, you, how are you going to know that? Well, you're going to have to develop a feel just from experience, time and experience in the gym. Get in, get the fuck out. If you want to stay in there, hang around like it's a VFW hall, chit chat all day and socialize. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But most of the time, if you see me chit-chatting and socializing, that means beware, I'm probably holding you up. You know, I ain't holding me up because I already got what I need to get and can leave any time. That's what that usually indicates. Uh, when you see me on Sundays at Retro, pretty much most always is the case. It doesn't matter what I go to Retro and do today. I'm finished for the week. It's just extra. It's just extra. I went in and busted my fucking ass yesterday at the gym. So when I go to Retro, I'm there to socialize and hang out and help other people and pay more attention to what they're doing. So I can afford to do that. It depends on who shows up and what we're doing. If somebody wants some help or wants to chit-chat, talk about something, 
or needs me to spot them or needs me to um, suggest or take them through some exercises or whatever, I can do that because I'm not really there to get business done necessarily for me that day. You know, and it's all for me too because I get something out of it. I enjoy doing it and I like meeting people. I'm not really a social butterfly, but in um, in these instances, I, I do have a good time. The camaraderie of it and, and whatnot. All right, so take care. That's it. I got to get out of here and get the retro so I'm not late. Take care. Have an awesome day and I'll see you again soon.